Welcome to the hook. Number 32, 33. We'll see when this lands. But, uh, so, uh, this week's MLR news and notes. Week number nine, Houston moves on to 11, 2, and 1. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about the draft. We're going to talk about the salary cap. We're going to talk about uh, some other announcements that were made. Uh, in week nine of the preseason. And there's a big uh, announcement, and that's why I'm in my, like, USA Rugby kit, uh, you know, uh, that we need to talk about. It's very important, and, uh, you know, just to say thank you to the man. But first, let's talk about Houston. Houston Sabercats hosted the Ontario Arrows, which are a, uh, profe- I guess, semi-professional select side, so all these guys are making money. Uh, they're out there, and the Ontario Arrows are vying to be one of the two Canadian entrants into Major League Rugby this next season for 2019. Uh, they've It's an offshoot of the Ontario Blues program. The Ontario Blues program will still exist, and it will still run as the uh, provincial side of Rugby Ontario. But this is, uh, you know, this is the best of what they got. And guess what? The best of what they got put out there, uh, you know, a great product against the Sabercats who, you know, have been together for 13 weeks as a squad playing matches before this and had most of the squad has been together for um, about six or seven months now. Um, so, uh, tie, 28 to 28. You look at... Ontario Arrows, and you're going to say it's a relatively similar side setup to Houston Sabercats. The Sabercats have a bunch of internationals, both Eagles and Sevens, uh, throughout their roster, and then a bunch of Junior All Americans, uh, guys who had play, have played rep rugby for this country. So, if you're wondering about the talent level, I think the talent level overall is relatively similar because you have guys like Paul Cellini up in Canada uh, playing for this team and you know they have a bunch of rep side internationals uh, on that roster but the question was uh, you know they've only really been together for about two months and they're really only practicing every weekend so how do you push in you know for uh, about six or seven hours of practice together uh, over two months to get ready for this game. Well, uh, a lot of that had to do with chemistry. Most of these guys played together with the Blues, uh, and they just grinded it out. Uh, their coach was the same as the Blues coach, uh, so they were running relatively similar systems. Yet, uh, I was very surprised uh, with the scoreline and the the props for the Ontario Arrows were very good. And when they were in bad situations, they were able to rely on their entire tool bag to uh, scrummage well against, you know, these two Irish props who came through academy systems in Ireland. And their backs were relatively dynamic enough. And their eight-man was pretty good. So, you know... One of the big things you want to see right now is the speed and intensity with which these teams can play. We saw it last week with their game against Nola Gold, and, you know, their, their physical intensity, it's, it's starting to feel professional, okay? And then the speed, you're starting to see that top-end speed that you want to see in just everything. So, it's, of course, their chemistry was on point because they were able to bring and tie the Sabercats who have been together as a close, tight-knit group, um, you know, for a while. Uh, the next thing on the agenda today is Dan Payne. Uh, I'd like to say thank you for your service to USA Rugby. And, you know, you're probably not the guy we deserved to take that mantle, uh, you know. And thank you for the two, the two years you will have served the membership of this organization. You provided someone who was congenial and accessible to every single type of member 
uh, in this organization, which I believe is a needed characteristic of the CEO of USA Rugby, in addition to whoever becomes the next board chair. Uh, you know, you got to be willing to put out all, like, all the fires, but also know that you're not really there to put out the fires. Uh, you're just, you're going to find, if someone needs help, you're going to find them. But if someone just has a question, you were always able to, uh, you know, converse and exchange uh, over Twitter or emails. You know, you're, you're, you were the guy that we needed. Uh, you know, for the next person that takes your job, uh, it's, it's still a tough gig. Uh, we, we've got a long way to go to get us to being a financially healthy organization. But when Dan Payne took over, we were in a nosedive and he, you know, he brought us out of the nosedive and he was able to make the hires needed to, you know, put our men's national team in, in good standing. We are now 5-0, and uh, under Gary Gold, uh, with four tests, uh, victories in the ARC and an additional international match against the second side, Argentina 15. And, you know, uh, looking at the release, you look at, so how does this tie into MLR, right? Uh, so I'm going to quote the release here. Uh, Dan Payne says, I'm going to focus my remaining time with USA Rugby on a successful Rugby World Cup 7s in San Francisco assist in every way possible to support the debut season of Major League Rugby, and finalize the agreement for a women's seven series stop in the United States this fall. However, I'm most excited about welcoming another child to our family in August. Promises to be a busy summer. So he's got a young son um, and a, about to have a young daughter, from what I understand. So congratulations to him. And I think that quote says it all is that uh, at some point in the next month or two, this, this competition we've been you know, talking about, Major League Rugby, is going to be sanctioned by the union. And I think it's going to be a great step forward. And then in year two, I expect you know, to see the likes of the USRPA get on board so that they can rep their players. But... Union and league working in synergy is the only way forward. Uh, 12 years of having a professional team league in Japan uh, landed them the bid for the Rugby World Cup, which will have happened at 16 years after having the top league. So that's extremely important for uh, our development in rugby in this country. Uh, so, moving on, uh, Dean Howes was at the media day for the San Diego Legion, and he said a few things that, uh, structurally, we need to talk about. Uh, the draft. People have talked about a possible draft. Uh, you know, it's coming, so what's it going to look like? When is it coming? I don't know. Uh, I, I don't think it should come anytime soon. I think we should sort of do a wait-and-see approach on that with, uh, you know, the NLL, which is the Indoor Lacrosse League, National Lacrosse League, it's indoors, uh, they did not have a draft until 10 years into the league's existence. Then you go to uh, the NFL, they did not have a draft until 15 years into the league's existence. Baseball didn't have a draft for, for like, 60 years or something like that. So we have to build up the game in this country before we can have the talent for a draft, but we also have to create those high-performance environments at the high school and collegiate level. We need to have uh, a high school-sanctioned varsity sport of rugby at every single school. And then we need, uh, you know, maybe it remains club rugby, but the adult decisions are made to have a full-time head coach and a high-performance environment for rugby at at least 100 colleges so that, you know, we have those environments. Like, all D1A needs to have full head time coaches, right? And they need, you know, compensated staffs, and the structure of the program needs to have, you know, every guy's, every guy's in the gym four days a week, no matter what, early morning. And then they're practicing three to four days a week. And they're, you know, getting after it in the film room. Things like that. Because if you do that, I think you have the if you have the top 100 programs in this country like that, and in addition to having MLR academies, the talent will be there for 
a draft. But that's like a 15 to 20 year project, in my eyes. Uh, also announced was a salary cap for full time players. So there's a mixture of academy, full time, and match fee players in this league. Salary cap for full time players is $350,000. Over the season. So I don't know now what the stipend is for the preseason, but the guys are definitely making a stipend during the preseason. So if you think about that, if you only spread that out on 10 players uh, that are full time, you have, you know, $350,000 for about three and a half months worth of work. That's pretty good money overall. So I don't think guys are, you know, are struggling near as much as we thought they would so I, I think the structures are in place to get this off the ground so we can have a salary minimum pretty early hopefully by year four if not year three and uh you know the next thing was is you know people are asking about streaming yes there is streaming it's been announced it's a big player is what he said you know uh, all on the like the top level of our mind so we got to think about that and then they also have an international streaming deal, which is also going to be announced. Uh, both these deals are unannounced at this time. Uh, on Earful of Dirt, we had some, uh, you know, conjecture with that. We sort of think it's going to be YouTube TV, and I'm pretty sure it's going to be via the subscription model and not just free. Uh, you know, and stadiums. Uh, so getting into those, uh, Houston announced that they are playing at Dyer Stadium which is near Carbock Brewing Company, which is really cool. So you'll probably have a, like, before game tailgate at the brewery, or it's at least going to have a, you know, brewery brunch or something going on on match day. Then NOLA, uh, I was sent a text message from GM Ryan Fitzgerald. The bleacher foundations are in place, so the only thing they have to put in is to really install the seats. The pitch is ready to go. So you will their their stadium is probably, you know, complete by the end of this week. And it's, you know, gonna be great. So uh, I'm Aaron Castro for the hook. You can catch me at the Strobro. Like, subscribe, comment, let's get in the game guys. Talk about rugby and watch it build. <laughs>